Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now let's say back in 2014 you wanted a GTX 750 or 750 Ti for your PC build but your budget didn't quite allow for either of those. The next logical step down would be the GT740, an $89 GPU that came with either 1GB of GDDR5 or 2GB of DDR3 VRAM. The later released third party vendor variants sometimes came with 2GB of GDDR5, but buying one of those would have meant spending closer to the cost of an aforementioned GTX 750. These days all GT740s are pretty close in price on the used market, but buying a GDDR5 version is still going to be the better choice, a 2GB version that is. However, and those of you long time viewers will know that this is where the bad part starts, what we have here is not the GDDR5 card. This MSI GT740 is a DDR3 version and today I thought we'd see what it can do. I think the GT740 aside from OEM graphics cards and mobile GPUs might also be the last desk top card to use DDR3 RAM. It only seems to be used in some OEM and mobile AMD cards since May 2014 as well, which is when the 740 was made available. So as we jump into the games you may be wondering what makes the DDR3 740 worse than the GDDR5 cards. Well it's the speed of the memory that's the performance killer. This card has a memory bandwidth of 28.5 gigabytes per second, the GDDR5 cards have a bandwidth of 80 gigabytes per second, which is over two and a half times faster. I might try and find a GDDR5 740 at some point to compare the two cards and see how that on paper difference actually translates performance wise. In the case of this card though, well I mean it's doing okay to some extent. Black Ops Cold War here is running at just about 30 FPS with low settings with a resolution of 600p. Okay, maybe the performance here is closer to barely hanging in there as opposed to doing okay, but moving on to Crisis Remastered now, and I can't knock the visuals of this game even with the lower preset. Just like in Call of Duty, we were able to average 30 FPS with some frame dips here and there. Actually, Crisis 2020 was particularly stuttery. You can probably pick up the on-screen stutters from this footage, and if not, if you look at the frame time graph, it tells you all you need to know. Every few seconds we're getting a repetitive sort of judder uh, that really distracts from the action. I know that the GDDR5 card will struggle too at maintaining a high frame rate, but I do wonder if that card would cause stutters like this in Crisis. I tried Cyberpunk 2077 next and while I'm glad the game started and ran without any crashes, I don't think I could call this playable to any extent of the word. The game is running at 360p and looks worse than other games running at 360p somehow. I know this because it isn't the only game that we had to use this resolution with throughout this video as you'll soon see. So Cyberpunk 2077 is a no-go pretty much, at least with the DDR3 version of the GT740. Again, this might be one that we'll have to compare gameplay-wise to the GDDR5 version to see just how different the performance is. But here comes Fallout 4 to save the day. Sure, it's a few years old, but in my opinion, it's still a very enjoyable and replayable game, so I've thrown it back into the benchmark list for now. While we still needed 720p, as 1080p meant an average of around 22 frames per second, we were using native 720p, so that's got to count for something, right? Now this frame rate was a combination of half an hour's gameplay, and during that time I ran around the wilderness, causing carnage, explored Diamond City, and got into some trouble with a few super mutants. These frame rate figures reflect the combination of all of those things and it's worth noting that built up settlements like Diamond City and Concord will give us worse performance. The same can be said for any title really. The busier the area, the worse the performance and it's more noticeable on a lower end card like this one. Now although Fortnite has a new performance mode that turns the graphics down beyond the low settings in order to ramp up the frame rate on lower end hardware, we didn't actually need to use it with the 740 in order to hit 60 FPS. We were able to maintain over 60 FPS on average using the DirectX 11 API and not the performance 
performance one though obviously using performance will still improve these numbers and you might want to make use of it with a GPU like this in order to avoid some of the heavier frame dips. Be aware that it does have a pretty substantial visual impact though as you may have seen in earlier videos. Now I don't know what came over me when playing GTA 5 but I decided to trade in our 60fps 720p experience for a 40fps 1080p experience instead. Because the game was running so well at 720p I thought that 1080p would be a breeze for our GT740 and while I was sort of onto something, or at least I thought I was, the game certainly exhibited a few noticeable dips here and there which only got worse as we ventured into the centre of Los Santos. The countryside improves these numbers by a little bit so if you like causing carnage while running around a few in-game trailer parks then you'll be more than fine with this GPU. Red Dead Redemption 2 had a few texture issues, as is apparent with some of these older 7 series cards, but aside from that it ran, well, pretty badly at 720p low. I briefly messed around with the resolution scaling options, but combining a super low res with the already lack of anti-aliasing with these settings quickly makes things near impossible to make out on screen. Somehow Rainbow Six Siege at 540p doesn't look too bad. I couldn't really see too much of a difference between 540p and 720p here to be honest, but the frame rate certainly increased with this resolution. Expect some drops though, especially in other game modes and in other areas. Finally then, and I mentioned this when testing Cyberpunk earlier on, uh, that we hadn't seen the last of 360p. It's Watch Dogs Legion now. 1080p, 720p and indeed 540p is a bit much for this card to handle and even 360p doesn't really help. The game actually crashed here after about a minute of gameplay and I had to switch off the PC entirely. Control Alt Delete didn't work because the system simply froze and nothing I could do would actually resolve the problem here aside from unplugging the PC and starting again. So then, the DDR3 GT740 isn't too great to say the least in 2020, or 2021 I should say, and what is possibly the last non-OEM or mobile DDR3 GPU ever to be released comes crawling to a halt in a lot of games. I will try and find a GDDR5 card to compare this to for another video, but until then all I can say is thank you very much for watching. I did plan on kicking the new year off with a slightly more powerful GPU than this, but all of a sudden a lot of my deliveries have just started coming through at once and I'm not really sure what I'm expecting to turn up at the moment. I ordered lots of stuff before Christmas and now everything's sort of just turning up <laughs> randomly uh, in no particular order. So. Yeah, I'm just testing things as they arrive. Nonetheless, I hope you have enjoyed this GT740 video. If you are looking for one of these cards, do your best to avoid the DDR3 version um, because I think even in 2020 and despite both cards suffering with modern games, this card will still be noticeably worse. But we'll confirm all of my suspicions in a comparison video at some point. So yeah, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this one, leave a like on it down below. If you didn't, leave a dislike. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.